Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're actually going to be exploring a really, really, really cool feature. But I want to preface this by saying that, um, as with anything, I, I think I've shared this with you before, my personal motto is always learning, always improving. So this thing that I'm about to show you is something relatively new that I just learned. And uh, hopefully you guys will forgive me if I make any mistakes. Uh, but I think it's a really, really cool thing that everyone should know about. And of course, the title is, or the name is in the title, but we're going to... Uh, mentioned it just now, which is Bifrost. So Bifrost is the, this really, really powerful thing that Maya has. And Bifrost allows you, it's a plugin, by the way, so you need to go into Windows, uh, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, make sure Bifrost is loaded. I usually don't load it every time because it does take a couple of seconds and it will add up to your Maya starting time. But Bifrost is a really, really cool thing that allows you to create a lot of amazing things. And this is, uh, you guys know about this, I've, I've mentioned this before, this is like my, my Achilles uh, heel. Like I, I never went and, and like dived in into like particle effects and, and this sort of things. But I think it's interesting that we at least explore a little bit of it. I, I won't be able to give you like the best or the most uh, like uh, advanced expertise on this thing because I, I don't have 10 years of experience as uh, what I do with modeling and sculpting and texturing. Uh, but yeah, like you can do smoke, you can do like particles, you can do fire, you can do uh, more particles, volumes, cloth, sand, snow, I think even water as well. Uh, do we have fluids or something? Uh, th there's, again, a lot of things. So the, the most like mystifying things about this elements is if you, for instance, like let's grab the cigarette smoke and you import it, uh, you get this thing right here and you're like, okay, I can hit play and okay, there's like some sort of smoke or something, but it's not working like I want. You get this thing called the Bifrost Graph Editor, which is this one right here. And you take a look at this and you're like, oh my God, like what the hell is going on here, right? And this was me a couple of weeks ago when I first started delving into this sort of things. Uh, I was like, well, well, what the hell is this? But I'm going to make it simple for you. And we're actually going to be doing something very, very cool. We're going to be doing a flag. So let me start a new scene real quick. There we go. And uh, let me explain real quick how this works. And uh, by the way, all of this information, this is not my information. Again, I've gathered this from several places throughout the internet, some documentation, some tutorials, some things, because I need to learn somehow, right? So um, we're going to do the traditional example. We're just going to do like a geometry and let's do like a plane. There we go. And I'm going to do end clock. So if you guys remember, and we do have an end cloth video uh, a couple of weeks ago, end cloth was one of the things or the ways that I was taught how to do cloth inside of Maya. And it works well. I mean, if you've got to do something, simple stuff and, and things like that, end cloth works very, very well. But this one works even better. So I'm going to show you how to use uh, the Bifrost MPM. That's the, that's the name of the, uh, the like cloth simulation system. So the way it works is actually quite, how can I say this? It's quite intuitive once you kind of know what you're going for, okay? So we're gonna open this Bifrost Graph Editor. I'm gonna create a graph. And you're gonna see here that we have an input and we have an output. So the way this works, or at least the way I understand this works, is think of Bifrost, Bifrost as a brain. And you're gonna input things and parameters into this brain, and this brain will uh, like give you the results that it processes, right? So they, they are going into the like visual scripting or visual programming side, very similar to Unreal, which I really like because as I was like delving into this thing, I realized that it's a really, really creative and, and easy way. Well, not super easy, right? But it's a, at least intuitive. Like once you get the explanation, it makes sense, okay? So the way this works is uh, simple. I'm gonna grab this P plane. I'm just gonna middle mouse drag it here. And this brings this, it's, uh, as you can see, it's very similar to the input mesh. So I can actually delete this one right here. Now you might think, well, okay, uh, blue square, like other square, can you just plug this in? And yes, you could, but nothing's gonna happen. So we need to tell this plane that we want to do a cloud simulation. And for that, I'm gonna press tab and the cloud is called MPM uh, cloud simulation or basic MPM, Zoop. let me find it. I think it's what's create MP, MP, oh, let me check my notes. I was really, really sure that I had it, but no, there is, where is it? There we go. So make, instead of create, it's make. It's make MPM, there we go. Make MPM cloth. And then this node right here is what tells uh, Maya and Bifrost to convert this plane into an MPM or cloth uh, simulation. So we just plug this in, like mesh to geometry, and that's it. However, by just making it a cloth, or a cloth it won't actually give us the simulation. And again, we can just like plug this in, and if you try hitting play right here, uh, absolutely nothing's gonna happen. 
So why is this? Because we, we not only need to tell the cloth that we are making it a simulated cloth, we actually need to solve for this. And we are gonna use something called simulate. So we're gonna say simulate NPM. There we go. And now this thing right here, which is the source of the simulation, that's the, it's the object itself, the, the plane, will be simulated by uh, this thing right here. Now you can actually grab this cloth mesh, bring it over here, and if we were to hit play, now you're gonna be able to see it. But there's one thing, and that's why I wanted to make this video because it took me like several places and several uh, elements to find like the proper workflow. Some people said something, some people said other things, and uh, it became quite tricky. So right click, and you're gonna say playback speed, play every frame free. Very important when you're doing simulations, we need to play every frame so that every frame, the computer in this case, simulates what needs to happen. So I'm gonna hit play, and this is what happens. Boom, the plane just falls down, straight down. And as you can see, there's actually two planes. That uh, confused me a little bit at first, but uh, then I realized that what's happening here is that this Bifrost graph is not taking your original plane and, uh, and similar or making it a cloth. It's actually like duplicating it, creating a cloth out of it, and then simulating. So the original plane, like nothing happens to the original plane. However, if you modify the original plane in any way, the simulated plane will respect those things, such as subdivision levels, vertex modification, anything. Like anything you do to the original plane will change the plane that is being uh, generated, which is really, really cool. And you can actually hide this plane. You can press H to hide it. And as you can see, we're only seeing the Bifrost one, the Bifrost generated one. And again, we hit play and there we go. Now, some of you might wonder, well, okay, that looks kind of nice, but uh, right now, of course, there's no plane and uh, it's not reacting with the cube. What can we do here? Well, the first thing we might want to do is add a collider. And we know that this cube is going to be the collider, so we just drag and drop. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press a tab key again, collider. There we go. And we're going to plug this into the collider geometry. So anything, we can actually have like multiple of these guys, which is really, really cool as well. Remember when we use NCLOT, you had to do this per object. Not here. In here, you just grab every object like this and then plug them both into the collider section. And then this collider gets injected into the collider um, like tab of the simulation properties. And then now, as you might expect, if we were to simulate this, you can see that it is actually reacting to the both of the cubes. Now, first thing that you might notice is like, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's reacting, but it's reacting really, really badly, right? Like, look at the like the uh, like the cage there, the the resolution. Like, wh where do we change the the collision volume or th those kind of stuff? You do it on a very nice setting or a very nice note that we need to add, which is called the NPM solver settings. So NPM solver settings. There we go. As you can see, every, everything, I think everything makes sense. Like w once you start asking the questions and, and, and in one of the main like Maya uh, tutorials that I saw, the guy that I think is part of the team that developed this, he mentioned that that's one of the goals of Bifrost to make it really like, okay, I want this and then I just get this note. I want this, I get this note. So very, very creative, very like uh, artistically, if you wish. Instead of having to worry about all of the parameters and stuff, you just think about what you want and it's kind of like drawing uh, with, uh, with code. Very, very interesting uh, approach, I would say. So here, we're gonna go into settings, and as you can see, this NPM solver settings will now give me more options for the um, simulation that's happening right now. And one of the first options that you're gonna uh, check is this one that's called doo -doo 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 -doo, detail size. So the lower the detail size, the more exact your simulation is gonna be. However, the lower this will be. So if I load, uh, lower, lower this to like 0 0.01, which is like 10 times lower than what we have, and we simulate now, uh, that's actually not working as I intended. Let me check here. You can see there's the gravity there. We need to go even lower. Okay, let me grab. Let me, I'm gonna grab the plane. And I'm gonna. Sh I'm, actually, I'm actually gonna give it one more resolution level. So I'm gonna say mesh and smooth. Even though I'm not seeing it, we can just smooth it. And now, as you can see, there we go. So it is a little bit better. Not great though. Let's try 0 0.001. See how how hard this becomes. Okay, that's a little bit better. You can see that that it's it's improving. There we go. Another thing that might affect the general thing is the scale of the scene. And this one is uh, you'd normally change it, I think, in here as well. Yeah. So right now you can see that the scenes in this uh, or scene units it's in meters. So I'm gonna change this to centimeters or to like decimeters or something. And uh, this will change the weight. You can see there we go. Now it's a little bit slower because it's a little bit. Uh, like, uh, like the simulation is getting a little bit more precise, okay? So that's one way to, to modify this thing. So I'm gonna bring this back to, to a value of one. 
And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty, pretty much it. Now, one thing that you may notice is right now it is running quite fast, but when I increase the resolution there, uh, things were running a little bit slower. So let's go back to the plane and let's say mesh smooth to smooth it out again. And now if I run this, you can see that the simulation is running quite low. It's, it's looking really nice though. See how nice it hugs the surfaces there? But as you can see, it's no longer running at 24 frames per second. And this is where caching comes into play. So we've talked about caching before, which is when you save a, a document if you wish or, or, or some sort of like information so that the program doesn't have to simulate everything from scratch every frame. Rather, it, it uh, goes into that file, reads that information and then renders it out. So you usually, once you're happy with the result, you wanna cache things. And the way to cache things in here was also a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna make sure to show you what uh, you need to do. The node is called file cache, which is this one right here. And the only thing you need to do is connect the cloth mesh into the objects and then the out objects into the output, of course. Now here, uh, here's where things get a little bit tricky. First, you need to pick where you wanna save this. As you can see, I already have in my project a cache Bifrost little folder that I created. And I'm gonna call this just like test dot, very important, this is where I got stuck <laughs> for a while. You need to add dot and then hashtag, 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 dot, and then VOB, it's the, it's the Bifrost basic like thing. You can also save as Alembic and you can also save as VDV. Uh, but I'm gonna be using this one right here. So I'm gonna hit save, there we go. And I'm gonna change this mode right here from read mode to write mode. So now Bifrost knows that when I play the simulation, I want it to save that simulation into my file right here. I'm not gonna go into the properties because honestly, I don't understand them as much. The, the, the thing that I uh, researched is that there's a lot of things that can, can get written on the cache and some of them you might not want. However, this is such a simple simulation that we really don't care and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be working fine. And here, let's change the time to 120 frames. So now, if I go to the first frame and I hit play, what's gonna happen is each frame is gonna be saved as a BOB file for each frame until we get like the final simulation. After it runs, it will do it again. So if you keep this running, it will just like replace it. Supposedly, as long as you don't have any like random things happening, every simulation should only be, um, or it will, it will be the same right now. However, if we add like any parameters that are random or change randomly, you might get different simulations. I'm just gonna stop it right here and I'm gonna show you here that we have the test. Test 001.bob all the way down to test 120.bob. So you saw that right now my simulation is running at about 13 frames per second. However, if now I change this from write mode to read mode, what's gonna happen, it's amazing, is that now this will play at real time. So as you can see, my computer is trying to run this at 400 frames per second, uh, not necessary. So I'm just gonna right click, playback speed again, and hit real time. So now when I hit play, this is now playing at 24 frames per second. And you can render this, like you can totally render this thing and uh, it's, it's, re it's ready to go. You just assign the material to the plane and, and you're ready to go. And I mean, how, how nice and how fast was this, right? Like we were able to create this really, really cool uh, animation in, in a really fast time. Now, this is not it. I'm gonna show you one of the classic, classic examples and you're gonna see a lot of uh, tutorials about this as well. Uh, but hopefully uh, you're gonna like this one, of course. So we're gonna do a flag. So let's uh, open a new scene, don't say. And I'm gonna show you one trick that I think is gonna work a little bit better than the traditional like flag tutorial that everyone does. And this one, uh, a friend of mine taught me this when, when we were uh, students. He was taking the, um, the BFX track while well, I was doing the modeling track. And, um, and they were doing like cloth sim. And he said, if you want like more realistic wrinkles on your, on your flags, one thing that you can do is add a couple of cuts to the whole thing and triangulate. So let me show you, let's position this flag right here. There we go. And I'm just gonna um, grab like my cut tool, and just like add some random cuts like that. And that's just a matter of saying mesh, smooth. And let's give it, um, I'm gonna keep one, I'm gonna do it one smooth just, just now, but I'll, I'll do more smooth later. So those little things right there, the fact that things are not flowing in the exact way will make it so that the cloth flows like a little bit nicer. So let's go back into our windows. We're gonna go into, actually let's add a texture. I think a nice texture would be good for this thing. So let's add, let's add a Mexican flag. I haven't used the Mexican flag in a while. Mexican flag, there we go. Of course, ooh, this one's cool. I like the, the colors, I like the texture, looks nice. There we go. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Next to live, source images. Let's call this flag Mexico. There we go. So uh, I'm just gonna uh, assign a new material to this. Let's do an Arnold AI standard surface. Let's do a history. And on the um, uh, color, of course, 
we are going to sign the file and we're going to sign the Mexican flag or flag Mexico. There we go. Boop. That's an exercise that I want to do later on. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's hit open. And if we hit press number six, there we go. So our flag is ready. Uh, the, the geometry is ready. So now we can jump into our um, Bifrost graph editor. We're going to create a new graph, which is going to be our like flag uh, creation. We can delete this just to keep everything green. Let's call this flag underscore geo. Again, always good to have this. And let's call this flag flag pole underscore geo. There we go. So let me make sure I'm recording. You, you, you guys have no idea how many times I've like started recording a tutorial and then realized I'm not recording. It's horrible. <laughs> so yeah, we're actually going to be using this one as well. I'll show you how in just a second. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did. So it's um, create. That's not create. It's... Uh, forgot again make 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 mp cloth there we go so now this flag geo will become an MP, mp cloth and then this uh, flag geo will solve so we need a simulate just like the solver simulate mp mpm there we go that's the source now here's where the colliders come into place remember the collider so we can use this flagpole and make it a collider we just need a collision or a collider uh, node and this mesh will be a collider and it will be a collider right here. So now the flag will um, like bounce against the against the pole very nicely. Um, after that, we are gonna of course add the npm settings. So remember npm solver settings. There we go, and it just goes right there. This will allow me to control again the uh, detail size, the scale if we need to, the gravity, like everything that we need to simulate will be in there. Now we can start adding because if I just hit play right now, what's going to happen? Uh, of course, nothing because we're not outputting anything. So let's go cloth mesh and output. There we go. So now we hit this. There goes our flag. <laughs> uh, it just falls down to, to nothingness. And the reason why it's falling down is because we haven't constrained anything. And again, this is uh, unless you get told it, it's a little bit difficult to, to make it as intuitive. But once you kind of know what's going on, it's quite intuitive. Like if I need to constrain, I'm just going to say constrain npm like that. There we go. So constraint npm. So what's going to happen is this source will be constrained and it will be constrained. Let's delete this one. We don't need double connections. And we will use something to constrain it too. What are we going to use to constrain it to? Of course, the flagpole. So if we constrain this geometry here or use the flagpole as the constraint geometry, whatever is intersecting this guy will like call to it and it will constrain it. So it's pretty cool. Instead of having to do the, the constraint transform or all of those pins that we had to do before, here, it's just a matter of constraining. And there we go. The flag is doing that very nice thing. However, as you can see, it's very stretchy. Our flag right now is just, it just falls uh, and it's really, really stretchy. And of course, that's not what we want. Um, to get rid of some of the stretchiness, I'm going to go back to the NPM cloth. Whoop. No need to go there. That, what, I, what happened there is I actually like went inside of the node to see what every single thing is doing. We don't know that. We, we don't need that, so I can just go here. We can just uh, close that. And uh, here we have this thing called the uh, vibration speed. This is kind of like the like the stretchiness of the object. So if we increase this to like 80, uh, what's going to happen is the flag is going to be a lot more, a lot more uh, solid. I think 80 might be a little bit too much. Let's try 40. Okay, I think we have this set to playback speed. Yeah, remember, play every frame free whenever you're simulating. There we go. So by doing that, as you can see, the flag is no longer as stretchy. Still a little bit stretchy, which is relatively normal for cloth. So uh, we're getting somewhere. And uh, now let's add a couple of notes. And as you can see on the simulate one, we have this influences, which is really cool. Because as you can imagine, we can influence the way that the solver is going to be solving the cloth uh, issues or the cloth uh, things here. So what is the normal thing that you find influencing a cloth like on the course, the wind. So if we press wind, there's going to be wind influence. And it's just as simple as that. You just plug in the influence over there and here you can control the wind. So right now the direction is X positive. So it should be going uh, forward. I'm actually going to hide the, the original flag so that we don't see it. And again, if we play, you can see that now the wind is like moving the flag forward. If we change the wind speed, like right now it's set to five, let's do like 10, double that and we hit play. Now you can see that the wind is pushing a little bit more intensely towards the, the x-axis, which is, again, something very simple that we've usually done in uh, in Enclo. But now with this, there's so much more flexibility and it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit easier to understand because you're actually seeing what's happening. In Enclo, it's all about like moving parameters and 
I always thought like simulation was a little bit unintuitive, but with this one, I really, really, really like it. So uh, let's have one more. We're gonna add a turbulence. So a turbulence influence. And as you can see, we can plug two influences on the same place and it's gonna work perfectly fine. As you can see there, it's, it's working, like no problem at all. And uh, under turbulence, we can say, I don't know, like four and five on frequency. And what that's gonna do is just, there's just gonna be like a noise uh, everywhere. So so now the, the, the flag, as you can see, it's not gonna be doing like the exact same like movements every time. It's gonna have a little bit more randomness or random, random elements. Let's change the frequency. And maybe even the target turbulence, there we go. So yeah, with that, as you can see, we have this very, very nice flag like on the wind. Um, now, here's again, this is from the original like a Maya, uh, like a Maya learning thing where they teach you how to use all of these elements. They mentioned, and I think it's really, really cool that you can go into the Bifrost browser and grab things from other graphs and use them on your own. And uh, there's one really cool thing on this one, on the cigarette smoke, uh, cigarette smoke which is a random node, which is this, random magnitude. And it's a node that's, again, if you double click it, you should be able to see it, there we go. There's a lot of things like a fractal noise, time multiply. There's just like things that are connected and they give you an output, but you can just grab this node, control C, bring it over here, control B, and there we go. Now we no longer need the cigarette, we just delete the graph, it's, it's gone. And, uh, and it's just a matter of finding how to plug these things in. So as you can see, this random magnitude has, has an out noise and you can see the color, which is this sort of like green, like light green. And on the wind properties, we can either plug it into the wind speed or the drag, which in this case is gonna be the wind speed. So what's gonna happen now is when we play this animation, the flag is gonna have a lot more like variation to it. So the wind's gonna be like going down and then going forward and uh, just creating a nice effect. Now, it's still a little bit stiff, and the reason why it's still a little bit stiff is because, of course, the geometry is not as, as much. So here's where I would go to the flag again, mesh, smooth it two times. Let's go two times, because now we're really increasing the, the resolution. And now if I hit play, of course, the uh, simulation is going to be really, really slow. Why? Because there's so much geometry. But once we start getting like the wrinkles and stuff, things are going to be looking quite, quite nice. So what I'm going to do here, guys, because I've already shown you how to do the cache file on the on the other one, is I'm actually going to reincorporate the cache file over here. So remember, just uh, file cache. There we go. So the cloth mesh is the output, the out object. That's the cloth mesh. And uh, let's, of course, go to our project. So there we go. We're going to go to the I'd like to save it on the cache folder by Frost. I'm going to call this Mexico underscore or just dot hashtag 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 dot dop there we go and we're going to go from frame uh, one to frame 120 only and uh, we're going to change this to write mode so this first simulation that this is going to do it's going to be writing my information so i'm going to play and as you can see it's taking quite a bit of time i don't know how many like seconds it's taking per frame but it's going to take a time so i'm going to pause this real quick guys and i'll show you once the cache is done there we go. So the caching is now done. It took about, I would say like three minutes uh, for the whole thing, which is in this case, just five seconds of animation. So you can see how this thing could escalate pretty quickly into like a really big mesh or be a really big a time um, rendering time. And of course, the, the stronger your computer, uh, the faster this will be, the slower your computer, the slower this will be. So I'm gonna change this to read mode now. And as you can see, if we do this, nice. Of course, this is running at a very fast time. So let's change the playback speed back to real time. And what's happening is we're just reading the cache and we're getting this very nice effect where the flag just like falls down and starts waving a little bit on the wind. I think the wind speed could get uh, like a little bit higher, um, but still like you can see the, the result here. Now the only problem is that this thing right here needs to be, you, we need to assign the, the standard material, there we go, so that we can see the actual texture. Otherwise we're not gonna be seeing it. But after this, like there's so much things you can do. For instance, let's, let's, find, let's find a nice like effect like this one right here, like a nice uh, render. Let's select this guy, sign a new material, Arnold, AI standard. Uh, let's do metalness and let's do like a gold color. There we go. Let's go Arnold, lights, sky and light, you know the drill. We're gonna add a uh, file note and the file note of course is gonna be one of our, like this one, uh, that, that's a little bit too light. Let's see, that one's better, there we go. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Let's find a nice camera for our thumbnail. You guys know I love creating this sort of thumbnails for you. 
So yeah, that's it. So now it's just a matter of hitting, hitting render and uh, we should be getting our very nice uh, effect over here. Look at that, pretty cool. Let's grab this guy. Uh, let's go to the yep, material. Oh, that's weird. We can't access the material there. That's fine. Let's just go a standard surface. So one, and I just want to increase the roughness here a little bit. So it's a little bit more like a like a matte uh, sort of thing. And there we go. That's the that's the kind of thing that you can do. Again, super fast, super easy. But it's not only here. Like you can do so so many things. And I think in the next couple couple of weeks and couple of days that we're gonna be uh, learning more stuff, I'll probably show you a little bit of the smoke, a little bit of the particles, a little bit about. A little bit about everything that I'm going to be learning. So I'm learning this uh, as well with you guys. Uh, we're still going to be doing modeling, texturing, and all the other other stuff. We're still going to have Alejandro's uh, input as well with Blender. Uh, remember, this Wednesday we do have our um, what's the name our live stream. So if you have any questions, um, get them ready so that we can answer those. It's going to be at 11 p.m. Uh, Mexico time on Tuesday. So that means that for India time, it's going to be um, Wednesday at about 11 a.m. Okay. And for everyone else, uh, we are in Mexico, we're in central time. So if you're in, in the Americas um, and you're like in Pacific time, it's going to be like 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, just just check your times. It's going to be 11 p.m. Mexico time on Tuesday. OK, so, yeah, that's it, guys. Super happy with this. I think you guys are going to like it. Give it, a, give it a go. Like try to do it yourself. It's not difficult. Uh, it should take you about 20 minutes like it did me to, or like what we just did. And uh, hopefully you can get a nice result like this one. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see, you back, I'll see you guys back on a Wednesday for our live stream. So hang on tight and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.